you unlock this door with the key of imagination. Behind it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, sight, and mind. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. me when I drove out to your old shop to meet you the first time was the name of your company and I was thinking about that spirit industries and at first I thought well that's a unique name but the more I talked to you the more I realized that that was more than just a name it was a description of your uh, philosophy of, uh, of your life you know these cars were just uh, a product that you were using as a tool to reach out to people uh, to uh, help them see the the good news of Jesus Christ and I was very impressed when I met with you that first time I learned a long time ago and this is scripture uh, a man makes a plan in his heart but the Lord orders his footsteps so we've entered the Twilight Zone <laughs> I've, got, I've got a plan for this week and boy, I don't know what's going to happen, but uh, Sam Pearson is going to be here tomorrow. And uh, you're gracious. You feed us. Uh, Mount Home Baptist Church feeds us every year. Wednesday night, we go over there and the tea buckets go over and, and uh, just grab somebody random almost to speak. And, right. and Sam's coming up. He's uh, from Texas. And he's got this vision for a ministry. Uh, uh, he don't know what the vision is exactly, but a, a mentoring program, something to work with kids. And uh, he's going to come up and pick up a, a sea cab, um, not a woody like yours, which is really nice. I bet we can slip a picture or two of that in here. With, well, we're done with the magic of the camera, but we're going to build that sea cab this week. And what, what's the doctrine on casting a vision? Well, I think the scripture says where there is no vision, the people perish. And I think that the implication there is that you and I and every other person that's uh, created in the image of God, uh, it's God's will for us to know His will and to have a vision. What is, what is my vision? You know, my vision is to live this day for the Lord. My vision is to learn every day what it means to be a servant. And my vision is to love my family. You know, I just lost my wife uh, just a few days ago. We were married for 46 years and had a wonderful marriage and she got Lou Gehrig's disease and it was a, it was a terrible thing. But uh, I watched her die with dignity and I watched her die with grace and she uh, gave me her heart on her dying day and said, you take my heart, and you put your hands to the plow and don't you look back. So I would say that my vision is to take that passage out of Luke, to honor my Lord and to honor my wife put my hand to the plow and carry on until my time comes. As I was looking at that, uh, the twilight zone part of this, uh, this week, it's, uh, there's a spiritual battle going on around us. And we don't see it. If, if we could see the battle going on, we would either be shaking in our boots or we would be shouting with victory. Amen. And uh, we can shout with victory because we have that victory. That's right. And, and I've told some folks that uh, I've gone to battle without the full armor on. I, I, learned, I learned the hard way. You go to battle, you want to put the full armor on. And, and I like to uh, go to battle with others that have the full armor on. Otherwise, we're, we're spending an awful lot of time picking up the wounded. And uh, what joy and what sorrow at the same time my pastor preached the day after the funeral. And I've never heard a more powerful, just powerful message. And then I think I told you this, but I, I do a little thing at the nursing home. A friend of mine went in there, so they weren't doing anything on Sunday. So I, I, at two o'clock after that, I, I wanted to bear tes testimony to Christ. And uh, I'm not so eloquent as a preacher, but I can read. And what better testimony than I read the first chapter of John. Amen. And uh, I skipped a little bit and then I went to the third chapter. 
but by the time I got to John 316, which we all know it's it's just you go to a football game and it's there, John 316. And, but God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And watching you and uh, and Susan and the relationship you had with the Lord and with each other, there was such power there and there was such comfort. And it's hard to understand, but God does some of his best work in suffering. Yeah. God is, is it's amazing. You know, these cars, as you told me, when I special had, we built my car out here. Mm -hmm. And I knew what I wanted and you helped me and I'm certainly not mechanically minded, but uh, you helped me and as we built that car, we talked about not only the, you know, just the mechanics of it, but we talked about how it could be a spiritual application, you know, how the engine could represent the, the power of God and how it had to be transferred to the wheels and how the Holy Spirit could take that power and transfer it to the pavement. And, you know, there was just wonderful days and hours we spent together and uh, Susan was right there with me all the way and one night she got at the band hall in that car. That's when I really thought I probably needed to get rid of it. And uh, she took off out across the band hall parking lot with both tires on fire and the policeman was there and he hollered at her and the policeman said, who was that wild woman? And my grandson said, oh, that was my grandma. And I thought it might be time for me to sell this car. Uh, but uh, these cars are a wonderful too. When we take those children for a ride, some of these children are just you know, it just shows them that there are men and women who care enough to let them get in their pet car and ride around on a parking lot and it just thrills them to death. And a lot of these kids uh, that are there by my church come from single parent families and the attention that's paid to them by these guys that come here is just a gift from God. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it just, I took my car when I had it over to the Christian school one day and took so many of those kids for a ride and, and uh, I got letters from those kids for months and you take a tool and use it and yeah. it just it just blesses you I wonder if perhaps in life <clears throat> these cars aren't really the figurative ch uh, uh, chariot because they are the chariot chariots of fire if you mm -hmm. want to go that far um, I also take kids and adults for yeah. rides in this car also my main focus when I take rides is people in the military. I retired from the Army. Yeah. Uh, I was in the war, didn't like the war. The war left me the way I am. The Lord didn't leave me the way I am. The war left me the way I am. Uh, but I can only say that anybody that listens to this program, times are short, times are hard. It's time to get your heart right, and it's time to get your heart right now. Amen. Amen. I, I built a car with uh, young people. Um, there's a white car, it's kind of a cross between Cinderella's pumpkin and the Monster Mobile. And we called it the Seirei Rickshaw. <laughs> and in Japanese, that meant the Holy Spirit's man powered car. Really, we're the Holy Spirit's man powered car. God, come into us and use us as His hands, His feet, as His tools. To share the good news, it's Absolutely. we have redemption, Absolutely. and it's awesome. So this is a setup for a week. We're, we're going to do some video and see what happens. All right, Sam, we're just going to see when good. Sam comes. We're, we're we're casting a vision. It's going to be good. We're going to reach souls somehow with this car that's going to go down to Texas. And Cease, would you feel comfortable praying for us and praying for whatever this mission is? Sure, that would be I'd awesome. Be happy to. Come to you once again, Father, on bended knee, on slope back. We hope that you will guide our steps. We hope that you will guide our throttle feet, our brake feet, that these cars are displayed in the, in the uh, furtherance of your glory and a display of your glory and the gift you've given us here on earth. Pray that you'll uh, continue to be with us as we continue to our homes, those of us that have to travel a good distance. And we pray, Lord, that you will deliver us all home safely. I would ask all these things and pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thanks, guys. Yep. So, looking forward to it. We are going to see what happens this week. Okay, good.